Well, praise God, praise God, hallelujah. I, you know, get so, uh, what's the right word? My understanding, the moment I want to uh, broadcast something that is going to be so powerful, it's like technical issues are looking for you. But I tell you, I will not relent because this is a word for now. Hallelujah. So, having said that, thank you for tuning in. And we're going to go straight into uh, teaching on the Shekinah glory of God. And why is the Shekinah glory so criteria for right now? And all my start off my little promise book and you pray scripture and by this, uh, you now already know that. So I'm just going to pray, Father, in Jesus' name, anoint the ears and the understanding in hearing this message so that you may be glorified and that people may be blessed with this fiery anointing because we are not been called to live in the smoke of your fire. We are called to live in the fire of your presence. <laughs> We're not called to live in the smoke of God's presence, but in the fire of God's presence. Glory to God. So get ready. Here it comes. We are uh, going to go uh, to uh, our first uh, scripture. Okay, uh, let me just, uh, that's not, let me just go here to the first one right here. Are you ready? Here it comes. Get ready, get ready. Amen. Hallelujah. Fire of God. I tell you, this is going to be it. God bless you, Sharon. Always so faithful to listen to the word of God. Now, Exodus 40 Verse 34 to 38, the fire of God deals with the glory of God. Now, Exodus 40, verse 34 to 38, then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. You and I are that tabernacle now. Remember how Jesus Christ uh, is the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word is God, and the Word uh, uh, became flesh. He was tabernacled in the flesh. Now understand, there's going to be lots of revelation in this broadcast, all right? Uh, in uh, the Old Testament, it was Moses' tabernacle that housed the glory of God at different times. But in the New Testament, you and I form the new tabernacle of the Lord our God because Jesus Christ came down, tabernacled in the flesh. Now our fleshly bodies, they have become redeemed through the blood of Jesus Christ, and therefore our bodies now become the tabernacles, that means the dwelling place of God's glory. Watch what I'm going to say to you. And I mean, we're just reading the first scripture. <laughs> and so your body now is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Remember, when Solomon prayed in the temple, the glory of God came in, and even the priests and so forth, they could not even stand in the glory of God. And even so with Moses' tabernacle, when the glory is there, it is all God and no flesh. 
It is all about God and no flesh. When the glory of God and his fiery presence comes in, it is no agenda. It is no uh, uh, rules and regulations. It's all about God. And it's not how well we preach, how well we teach. It's not how well we are skilled. It is all about the presence of God. Okay? Having said that, watch this. Exodus 40, 34 to 38. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting. And I'm just reading from the word. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Pay attention to this. It says, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Now watch this. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting. Tent of meeting. The presence of God wants to meet with you and I. We are now the tent of meeting. We are the new tabernacle, the tent of meeting. If you read in, uh, I believe in uh, Peter, the book of Peter, we are tents. And so David's fallen tent has been restored to overtake the old tabernacle with its rules, regulations, and procedures. The old tabernacle under the law, you slaughter a goat, and then you can come into the presence of God. Praise God, we don't have to uh, uh, kill goats now to enter into the church or to gather with home churches or uh, the, you know, with, with God's presence. We don't have to carry no goat that was slaughtered. If Jesus Christ became our sacrificial lamb. And because of Jesus Christ, we now can enter. But I want you to understand, there's a lot of revelation that's going to come. So get ready. Now, it says, in all the travels of the Israelites, I'm reading from verse 36, in all the travels of the Israelites, pause, what travels? You and I have been predestined. You and I are on our way to heaven. Is that right? And so because we are predestined, we are on a path of traveling. And in all our travels, Moses was saying on behalf of the Israelites, whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, this is the new tabernacle in Christ Jesus. This is God's tent of meeting. And God's glory has been deposited on the inside of this tabernacle. And His uh, latter glory is called the Spirit of Glory, which is the hope of glory, which is Christ Jesus. Now, you may have to listen a few times to this, but I'm just going to absolutely unravel all the things that my God gives me. Amen. Now, having said that, in all the travels of the Israelites, whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would set out. That means when the presence of God lifted, they moved on. They did not stay in a place of complacency. They did not stay in a place where the presence of God was not covering them. Please understand that. But if the cloud did not lift, right? The cloud is God's presence, yes. And then they would stay. But if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day it lifted. Verse 38. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day, and fire was in the cloud by night in the sight of all the Israelites during their travels. So God wants us to understand that His presence should govern us by day, by night. And the moment you become, uh, you seem to enter into any strife between your emotions and your thoughts that are clashing in your mind, that means the cloud of God's presence, the cloud of glory has lifted. 
That means there's something you have to readjust on the inside of yourself so that the presence of God and you can connect and you can travel on your destiny path or uh, travel in your uh, uh, direction or purpose for which God has called you. It is vital. The moment you lose the peace of God, that means the cloud has lifted. And whether it is by day or by night, the fire of God is in that pillar of cloud. The fire of God. The fire of God. So how do I define the fire of God in me? When you're zealous, when you're enthusiastic, Jesus says, zeal for my Father's house has consumed me. Hallelujah. John 2.17, when you start losing your enthusiasm and your zeal for God, when you start losing that fire that burns on the inside of you, that says, I cannot wait to go and hear what this preacher is going to say about God's word or the message that's going to come through him. I cannot wait to sit under another teaching. I cannot hear, wait to hear what God is going to say to me. That is the fire of God burning on the inside of you. Now, when that fire is no longer there, you need to repent and say, God, forgive me, forgive me, because I know in Revelation, remember, it says, God says there, and Jesus said it himself as the resurrected Christ, you're either hot or you're cold. You're either hot or you are cold. And if you are lukewarm, I will spew you out. What a statement of truth. A lukewarm individual who's not uh, on fire with commitment, faithfulness, dependability, showing up and coming to gather with the saints. You see, a lukewarm person, and I'm not talking about if you have to work. I'm not talking about if perhaps you're going through a rough time with your body. I'm not being legalistic. I'm saying if you're putting the, <laughs> am I going to be in trouble for saying this? But, you know, I sometimes hear in my, uh, what, almost 34 years of ministry, oh, pastor, we had to clean the house today. But what happened on Monday? What happened on Tuesday? What happened on Wednesday night? Oh, it was Bible study. I see. And what happened Thursday? No, Thursday we went to a cinema to watch a movie. Listen, what is more important? For you to honor the Sabbath of the Lord, to honor the Sabbath day of the Lord, okay? And not rush your feet into something that will cause you to break that Sabbath covenant that God made through Jesus Christ. One day, one day of rest in sitting under His Word. Did you know that the Bible says that we ought to give uh, 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 10% of all that we have unto God. It's not just money. There's 168 hours in a week. Think about this. No legalism now. There's 168 hours a week or so, right? Yes, yeah, seven times what? 24 should give you 168. What is 10% of 168? We ought to at least give God 16.8 hours. And if we can make up that, at least gathering with the saints, gathering with prayer meetings, gathering with, uh, you know, your church family. Hallelujah. God bless you. Uh, Johan Robbie, all the way from Africa, prophet that God is using, developing. Uh, we had part of his ministry in raising him up, uh, you know, uh, also as a spiritual son, Johan. And then someone else came and took over and, and helped him to develop further. At the end of the day, one will water another plant, or one plants another waters, and God makes it grow. God bless you, Johan. God bless you. God bless you. Now, back here. Here's the point. If you want the Shekinah glory of God, you've got to to let go of anything else that will stop your right standing between you and God. We can, you can say anything you want to, 
But if you uh, keep saying, well, you know, it is this, it is that, it is blah, 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 then your priorities need to be prioritized. <laughs> oh, I can feel a fire burning in me. I tell you, since early morning, I was ready to preach this word on the airwaves because this is a word for a now people. And now, people, we need a present-day word. We don't need a word necessary. And I don't say we don't fully, but sometimes present-day truth is far stronger than a word that is uh, maybe eight years old in an archive of ministry uh, uh, sermons. All I'm saying to you is present-day truth for a present-day God will give you present-day breakthrough. Now, watch this. Are you ready? Because this is just the introduction to today. So I may be a little bit long today, but it is going to be what it is. Amen. Now, in Second Chronicles 7, 1, when Solomon finished praying, fire, fire, somebody say fire, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Hallelujah. This is the New Testament temple. Your body is the New Testament uh, temple in whom God now dwells by His Spirit. Hallelujah! And when you pray, you activating the glory of God. When you pray, you stirring up, you stirring up, you stirring up the rivers on the inside of you. Exodus 3, verse 2 to 5. I'm going to, uh, just reading some of these scriptures and then I want to get into the message, okay? Now, in Exodus uh, 3, Exodus 3, are you ready? Uh, where is it now? Verse 2 to 5. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire. Now, I'm just going to paraphrase. You can go and read it. Exodus 3, verse 2. Two to far. When God called Moses, when God called Moses, what did God, how did God appear to Moses? Through the bush of fire. And that bush never burnt up. That bush never burnt up. And I'm just saying, when you are on fire, for the Messiah, you are on fire with the presence of God, which is the glory of God, and you purpose in your love that I will not move from here to there unless the presence of God goes with me. Hallelujah. Even our sermons must be saturated with the presence of God with much prayer. Now, having said that, Watch what I'm going to say. You see, the presence of God will distinguish you as a people of difference. The presence of God will make you stand out and not blend in. The presence of God will enable you and not disable you. The presence of God will empower you to do what you could never do before. The devil hates the presence of God. So what does he do? He puts taskmasters over people. You've got to, you've got to uh, uh, work maybe three jobs. You've got to work long, long, long hours. Why? Because they are taskmasters. They want to keep you so busy that you have no time to worship your God. And your God is everything. Let me say this to you. God before you who can be against you. Now I'm going to get into some ministry. Are you ready for this? Let me bring this up on your screen there. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. Are you ready? He says, And we all with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory. And we are being transformed into his image with an ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. You have to, have to, have to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. 
You cannot experience the glory of God to the fullness of what God has purposed for you if you do not have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the very presence of God. Let me just see here something. I'm just going on to my iPad. Okay. And I just want to see if I can find a quick scripture here uh, dealing with uh, something very, very specifically. Okay. Hallelujah. Are you getting something so far? Yes or no? Okay. <laughs> okay. Now. All right. Let me just see. Uh, uh, let me just see. Uh, here we go. I knew it was there. Interesting. 1 Peter 4 verse 14. Let me bring that up on your screen here, okay? Uh, 1 Peter 4, verse 13. Okay, 1 Peter 4, verse 13. Let me just bring it up there, all right? 1 Peter 4, verse 13. I'm going to read it. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings that when his glory is re uh, when his glory is revealed you may also be glad with exceeding joy now are you ready for verse 14 are you ready for verse 14 let's just uh, uh, bring up that and put there uh, up to verse 14 okay you ready now verse 14 are you ready for this if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory. Somebody say spirit of glory, spirit of glory, spirit of glory. The glory of God in the latter times in the New Testament, the latter glory is the Holy Spirit. The latter glory is the Holy Spirit. The former glory was the law with all its rules and regulations. And if you do this, you experience the presence. If you do this, you may experience it. If you kill a lamb, if you kill a goat, you may experience this. But in the uh, last days, the glory of God is in the Son of God, which is Christ Jesus. And that glory is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is now inside of us guaranteeing our eternal inheritance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The spirit of glory is on the inside of you. You have the glory of God. The glory of God is already now in you when you have Jesus Christ. But you have to stir up the glory of the Lord. You stir up that glory and get excited. Get excited. Burn with a zealousness. Burn with an enthusiasm. Burn with a, a, a love on the inside of you that says, Oh, I will forgive the whosoever. I don't care what you do to me, but I will walk in forgiveness. That's the glory of God burning in you, burning in you. The fire, the presence that says, I will be so quick to forgive. You just make a mistake and I've already forgiven you even before you made it. Because my attitude is one of walking in forgiveness. That's the glory of God. I'm getting excited here. Now, are you ready? Are you ready? Watch now. Matthew 3 verse 11 is very important. We have to now find out, because sometimes there are the experts in the spiritual laws of God, and they so want to not promote maybe the Holy Spirit, but I want you to understand, 
without the Holy Spirit, you will not even be convicted of sin. Because John 16 says, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of glory, as we read 1 Peter 4, 14, the Spirit of glory. The, and Jesus in John 16 said, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will convict you of sin. He will convict you of righteousness. He will convict you. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot even worship God. Because Jesus again said, John 4, 23, 24, read it there, that the worshipers, my God, my Father, six, are those that will worship Him in spirit and truth. You, Some people just have truth, but no spirit. If you only have truth, you become stiff, starchy, inflexible. You become dried up, wineskins, brittle, sensitive, offensive, and blah, blah, blah. Oh, we are not made to be that. We are made to be flexible wineskins. We have been made to uh, be in His image and likeness. And now God has given us a, a, a new, fresh ladder glory called the Holy Spirit, stirred up by the Christ, the hope of glory on the inside of you. But you see, you have to activate, you have to activate. The Holy Spirit is an intercessor. Jesus is an intercessor in heaven. Romans 8, it tells you when you and I do not know how to pray, the Holy Spirit will intercede through uh, us so that we can, He will help us in our weaknesses and He will pray through us. And Jesus, in uh, at the right hand of the Father, he is your chief intercessor interceding for you right now. The Holy Spirit and Jesus, they won. Now, having said that, are you ready? So we ask the question, should I really, really embrace the Holy Spirit so much? Do you want me to become a Pentecostal? No. Are you a Pentecostal? No, I'm a son of God. So why all this Holy Spirit stuff? It's in the Bible. And if it's in the Bible, you ought to embrace it. Because the whole Bible is written under the unction and under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. All scriptures are God-breathed. So a smart individual will maybe say, oh yeah, it's God-breathed, not Holy Ghost-breathed. Excuse me? Go to Job 33, verse 3 and 4. Between the, those two verses, you'll find the Spirit of God made you and I. And then in John 20, John 20, it says, after Jesus appeared to the disciples, after his resurrection, he showed them the marks, yes, and then he breathed upon them the breath of life, and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Jesus was full of the breath of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Woo! I can feel the fire of God in this <laughs> little studio here. Now let's read Matthew 3.11. Are you ready? John the Baptist says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me one comes who is more powerful than I. After me one will come who is more powerful than I. After me will come one who is more powerful than I. Listen to what the Bible says. I'm not asking you to... Uh, uh, listen to a preacher just trying to say some things. I'm saying what the Word of God says. And what the Word of God says, that's what I believe in. Look at this picture. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm going to move out of the way. Look at that. The glory of God. Find a man or a woman who is willing to stand inside of the Word of God and let the Word of God begin to be revealed. Look at that man there. There's a little picture there. See that? When I move out of the way, a Bible, and he's standing in the Bible, and he's upholding the Bible as he's covering, and he says, this is where I come out of 
They're God's world. I'm coming out of God's world and I'm going into the world. Hallelujah, somebody. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I say glory to God. We stand on the word of God. The word of God will make room for you. But let's find out now. The Holy Spirit. We're going to get into some stuff now. This is a broadcast that I know the enemy does not want me to get out. Watch this now. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Are you ready? Here it comes. Here it comes. Matthew 3.11. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me one will come more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Somebody say fire. I say, somebody say fire. Somebody say fire. Hallelujah. Let me put it on your screen right there. I say, fire of God. Hallelujah. We need the fire of God. Somebody say fire. Fire. We serve a God that is on fire. He says, you either hot or you cold. You either hot or you cold. There is no in between. You either hot or you cold. Because a lukewarm person is a most unpredictable individual. You never know where they where they stand with their commitment with God. When you are lukewarm, you are most unpredictable. God says you either hot or you cold. This is a time where you've got to realize if you put every excuse and everything in this world first before your God, you are going to not have all the help to rescue you from unnecessary challenges. So the question is, Preacher, you seem to really labor on the Holy Spirit. Why? Are you ready? Are you ready? Read with me. In fact, I'm going to just turn there my Bible. I don't think I have it here, but uh, let me just turn it there, and then I'll quote it to you, all right? Luke 4, verse 1. The Bible says, are you ready? Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. You understand? Now, if Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit, where is Jesus? Jesus is on the inside of me. So surely when Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit, and Jesus is on the inside of me. Surely I need to be led by the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit who leads Jesus. And if I try to lead Jesus instead of the Holy Spirit, I'm just like, oh, I don't even want to use it. But Jesus said to those uh, religious people, you are like whitewashed tombs. You clean the outside. You look so holy, but there are only but dead men's bones coming from the from your mouth when you speak. Oh, I don't want him to say to me that you were just like a tomb. You were just like an old tomb with dead bones on the inside of you. You ignored my spirit who gives love and who transforms people into my image and likeness. Yeah, I am a spirit and you ignored me in the spirit. You rejected my Holy Spirit. I don't want him to say that to me one day. I have a responsibility before God as a preacher and a son of God and a servant of the Lord that have been called to serve people, to preach the truth uncompromisingly. Hallelujah. So Jesus in Luke chapter 4 verse 1, Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
I don't have a formula. I don't have any thing to say how God will fill you with His Spirit. It's between you and God. Amen? Now, listen, I want to say this to you. And we're going to get deeper into this now. I'm not cutting this broadcast short. I believe this is a broadcast that needs to go out as a complete one. So you may get a double portion here today. In God's service, it's all about the presence of God. It's not about our skill or ability. There are many skillful speakers. But are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Are you moved by the Spirit of God? Are you under the influence of the Holy Spirit? Then we can affect people's lives and add value to them. Yes, preacher, you may as well say yes. It is, you see, for that kind of anointing, that means energized presence of God by the Holy Spirit, one needs to spend more time with God. You need to pray more. And, uh, you know, on the scriptures, all scripture is God breathed, which means it's the breath of God, which is the Holy Spirit, is upon all scriptures. Come on, somebody. Come on. Beloved, we seek for something more than a busyness. We seek for the evidence of God's presence to use us. Moses said, do not send me from this place or the Israelites to another unless your presence goes with us. I want you to understand something. As I look into this camera, I want you to understand without the presence of God, you are done. Without the presence of God, you are sunk. You sunk. I make up my own English here. Past and sink and sunk. Okay. What I'm saying to you is. Start talking and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Embrace the Holy Spirit. Have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 13, last verse there. Is it 2 Corinthians 13? Now I need to go there and just double check on myself. Yeah, verse 13. Uh, 2 Corinthians 13, uh, verse 14. The, it says, To all the saints I uh, greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion, that means the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. The three, they work together. God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Watch now. Beloved, we seek for something more than just being busy for God. We want the presence of God. Jesus is our example. Oh, there it comes up. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness in Luke chapter 4, verse 1. And then verse 13, 14, you can go and read it. Afterwards, Jesus, after being tempted and tested and he passed the heavenly test, after that, he returned in the power of the Spirit. In the power of the Spirit. We need the power of the Spirit of God. We need the power of the Spirit of God. I'm going to turn in my Bible to Acts, 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 Acts 1. Oh, hallelujah. Let me take a sip of my Milo. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now watch this. The Pharisees... They were not led by the Spirit of God and they had no power to overcome issues in daily life. People said, look at this Jesus. They were amazed. He preached with authority and with power. Authority is not how loud you can shout. Authority is having a connection with God through the Holy Spirit in causing Jesus to be exalted. 
That's the function of the Holy Spirit, to enlarge Jesus, to extend the kingdom of God, to help us to worship God in spirit and in truth, to read your Bible and get revelation by the Spirit. Now, and by the way, the book of Revelation, when you read about the, the seven churches and so on, hear what the Spirit is saying. It says, hear what the Spirit is saying. Now, the Pharisees, they couldn't handle Jesus because Jesus had power. When you're not moved by the Holy Spirit or under the influence of the Holy Spirit, you know what those Pharisees and could not seize and would not seize, you know what they did? When they caught a woman in the act of adultery, they brought this woman to Jesus. Jesus is full of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is led by the Spirit in Luke chapter 4, verse 1 and verse 13 and 14. He returned in the power of the Spirit. And then uh, Luke 4, uh, is at verse 18, the Bible says, Jesus said, For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the good news. Come on now. To, uh, to uh, bring recovery to the uh, blind and to lose, uh, you know, to speak freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to release the captives, set them free. That's the presence of God. You cannot do that stuff without the Holy Spirit power in your or my life. God is not flesh. God is spirit. That's why God Okay, I'm running ahead. All right. So the Pharisees, they said to Jesus, give the instruction that this woman should be stoned. She was caught in the act of adultery, right? She was caught in the act of adultery, right? Give the okay. She must be stoned. But when you're under the Spirit of God, and you let and influence by the Holy Spirit. By the way, the Holy Spirit is also called the Spirit of Grace. Let me just see here. The Spirit of Grace. Somebody say, Spirit of Grace. Amen. The Spirit of Grace. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of what? Of Grace. Are you with me? Let me just see if I can just find another word here. It's so wonderful, this iPad stuff, you know. It helps us, right, to find something that we're looking for. Amen? The Spirit of Grace. Are you ready? Uh, Zechariah 12, verse 10. That's why I turned to Zechariah 12, but I was just trying to look which verse there it is. I should have just scrolled more up. I've got it underlined. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Grace. Zechariah 12, verse 10. And I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the Spirit, capital S, the Spirit of Grace and supplication. Then they will look on me whom they pierced. You understand? The Spirit of Grace. So they said to Jesus, give the instruction. This woman needs to be stoned. Jesus is led by the Spirit of Grace. Jesus is the Lord of Grace. And he says, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Amen? Now, I'm going to get into some serious things here. And before I do that, you're going to have to get ready. Jesus met two men on the road to Hamas, Imaz. They were discussing what happened in Jerusalem and so on and so forth. Long story short, Jesus appeared, says, what are you talking about? And I said, are you the only one who don't know what has happened in Jerusalem? This great prophet who was, you know, crucified and blah, blah, blah. And Jesus began to talk to them and talk to them. And they were kept from recognizing him until he broke the bread. They recognized who he was. And they said, did not our hearts burn 
when he was talking to us. When you're full of the Holy Spirit and you preach and you teach and you talk and you speak, people's hearts, minds, consciences will begin to burn with conviction. That's what I pray and I fast. And I say, God Almighty, I don't want to just talk for the sake of talking. Before you take me to be forever and ever with you, I want to impart everything that you've given me. And I'm not going to hold back no punches. I will speak the truth in love, but only but the truth and nothing else but the truth. We cannot only preach parts of the Bible and not other parts. It's either the whole word, uh, word of God or it's nothing at all. Are you ready? Here it comes. Here it comes. I hope you are ready. I'm going to take you to chapter 1 in Acts and chapter 2. Charles Towns, what a precious man of God, my brother. Look at that. Kingdom blessings to you too. Hey, I'm just going to get into Acts 1 and 2 now, and we're going to have such a revelation about the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Let me bring our brother up there. This was such a precious, and I, he still is. They helped us in, in the beginning stages, coming to America, and he gave me an opportunity to preach and allow the gifts of God to flow in my life. Thank you. Thank you. One more time. Thank you, Brother Charles. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give him a good hand. Yeah. Hallelujah. Brother Charles, a precious man of God. Now let's get to Acts 1. Are you ready? I know some foundations are going to be shaken now in Acts 2 and Acts 3, and Acts 4, and then we're done. Okay? I cannot close this broadcast until I have done it. Are you ready now? In Acts chapter 1, I want you to understand, Jesus gave an instruction to the believers in, uh, after his resurrection, and it says there, Acts 1 verse 2, until the day in which he was taken up, he gave instructions through the Holy Spirit, not through a set of bylaws or a, a, a set of <laughs> religious rules or regulations. He gave instructions through the Holy Spirit. Now, watch this. And then he said in verse 4, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but there shall be one, or but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Second baptism, or another one, not many days from now. And then John the Baptist himself also said, that was Jesus speaking. But remember John the Baptist, Matthew 3.11 says, you'll be baptized, one after me will come baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Somebody say fire, 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 fire. That's what we want. That's what we need right now. Fire. Not gimmicks, but fire of the Holy Ghost. So Jesus says, for John baptized with water, that's a, a baptism of repentance. And But not uh, many days from now, you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit, okay? But you shall receive, verse 8, verse 8, but you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power, power. Somebody say power, power, power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, come on now, and you shall be my witnesses. There's the key. See? We're going to bring balance now. I know I'm going to shake and rock some whatever. In Acts chapter 2, it says, And you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and so on and so forth. Acts chapter 2, let's get there. Are you ready? Acts chapter 2. Are you ready? Now in Acts chapter 2, suddenly what sounded like a mighty wind rushed in, filled the whole house. 
and what seem to be tongues of fire. Watch that. There's going to be much revelation here. Get ready. What seemed to be tongues of fire came to rest upon each one of them. And then the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, it says, And they began to speak in other languages. Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language? Remember, Jesus said, You will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and you will be effective witnesses for me. And so he baptized them. He baptized them. And they began to speak in different languages. Some uh, will refer to it as, oh, here it is, verse 11. And the Cretans and Arabs, and we hear them speaking in our own tongues, the wonderful works of God. So God baptized them in the power of the Holy Spirit with the evidence. And they, they, they began to speak in different languages. Why did God pour out His Holy Spirit? Get ready now. Why did God pour out the Holy Spirit? Jesus said, I'm going to go to my father and he will give you another. I will ask of him and he will give you another comforter just like me, right? And he will tell you of things yet to come and he will take from what is mine, make it known to you. He will not glorify himself. He will bring glory to me. The fact that the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost is the confirmation confirmation that Jesus Christ arrived at the right hand of the Father, presenting His blood, sprinkling the mercy seat that trumps over judgment. The Father seated on the mercy seat, sprinkled with blood, and Jesus at His right hand. And the Spirit confirmed that Jesus arrived safely. And he poured out his spirit and they began to speak in different languages. Now, speaking in different languages, listen, we must not make a statue out of it. It's a movement. It's a movement. We, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was to empower the disciples to preach the word of God. To be bold. To cast their devils. Come on now. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit is to empower you and I to flow with 1 Corinthians 12. The spiritual gift which is the expression of the life of Christ. The gifts of healing. Gifts of miracles. and What is it? The gift of faith and discernment, and words of wisdom, words of knowledge, and, and uh, uh, prophecy, and tongues, and interpretation. There's got to be interpretation. It's no good for me to speak in Greek to you if you're English. What's the use? The Apostle Paul is very, very, very clear on all this balance. Now, watch now. And then I'm going to begin slowly to close. And I'm going to say this again. When somebody says, oh, you're a Pentecostal. I'm not a Pentecostal. I'm a son of God. I'm a son of God. I'm a child of God. Oh, but uh, you believe in Pentecost. Well, if you don't, you're in trouble. Let me explain. There are three feasts in the Bible. You come out of Egypt. From the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light of his dear son. That's the feast of Passover. When they apply the blood of Jesus Christ to all the doorposts. Come on now. And the angels of death passed over. That's your first feast of Passover. There's much more to say, but I'm not going to go there. The second feast is the feast of Pentecost. It's not a doctrine. It's a feast. It's a feast. You celebrate a feast. What do you celebrate? Jesus arrived at the right hand of the Father. How do I know? He poured out his spirit. How do I know this is of the Lord? Because Jesus says, go wait in Jerusalem. And not uh, many days from now, you will be what? 
endured with power from on high. So they received the power of God from on high. Amen. He says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Okay. And then you shall be witnesses. Come on, brothers and sisters. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit is to empower you to be an effective witness as Jesus is the center. Jesus is the loving Christ. Jesus is to be preached. Jesus must be preached as being killed being, uh, uh, and being flogged, being killed, being buried, but being raised from the dead as forgiveness of sins for towards mankind that whilst we were sinners, Christ died for us. How much more will we live that Christ is alive and well? He's arrived in heaven. How do I know? Because the evidence is he poured out his Holy Spirit. Now he says, I want you to be powerful. That's why I'm giving you my spirit. The spirit is the inner man of Christ. Galatians 4 verse 6. God gave us the spirit of his son. Okay. Are you ready? And I'm going to close with this. I'm going to close with this. Okay. Get ready now. Acts chapter 3. Yes, Peter and John. They're going to pray. I'm going to close with this. They go to pray. There's a lame man sitting at the gate. Beautiful. Begging. Peter just received the infilling of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Watch this now. Watch this now. He says to this man, silver or gold we do not have, but what we do have in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk and he helped the man up. He now has a power. Watch now. So the council and the religious leaders of the day in Acts chapter 4, they became so mad with Peter and John, it says Peter and John, they were arrested in Acts chapter 4, and I'm closing. They were arrested for healing a man and put in prison. And watch now. However many of those, Acts 4.4, 4, Many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of them grew to 5,000. Now they bring out Peter and John. When they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power? Acts 4, chapter, uh, Acts 4 verse 7. By what power? By what power? By what power? Or by what name have you done this? By what power and by what name? Watch now. Acts 4 verse 8. Are you ready? Is it right? Yes. 8, <laughs> 5 and 3. <laughs> Watch this. Verse 8. Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, If we are judged for a good deed, says, let it be known to you all, verse 10, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whoo, he says to them, you guys crucified this Jesus. Now watch what I'm going to say. In Jesus said to Peter, in Matthew 16, he asked, who do you say the son of man is? And Peter had the revelation. Then Jesus explained, watch this now. Before Peter was filled in with the Holy Spirit, before P uh, Peter experienced the power of the Holy Spirit, watch now, he rebuked Jesus in Matthew 16 for wanting to go to Calvary and to be crucified at the cross. He says, not so. And Jesus had to say, get ye behind me. Yes, Satan. Now that Peter is filled in with the Holy Ghost, watch this, with the Holy Spirit, what does he do? 
He preached the very thing that he rebuked Jesus for. He rebuked Jesus for saying, you will not go to Calvary. Now he tells the people, you crucified him. <laughs> oh, my, 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 my. When you filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to begin to say things you could never say before. When you filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to begin to do stuff you could never do before. When you filled with the Holy Spirit, you have a boldness and a confidence and a power to say no to sin and yes to righteousness. And the people were cut to the heart in verse 12. Uh, is it verse 12? Let me just see here. He, Peter said, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Watch now, watch now. Verse 13. Ooh, you've got to see this. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter, remember I kept saying to you, the boldness, the confidence, the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and has filled you in. Watch this now. They realized Peter and John were uneducated, untrained men. They marveled. They realized they had been with Jesus. When you filled in with the Holy Spirit, you were with Jesus. When you're full of the Spirit, you'll preach Jesus. When you're full of the Holy Spirit, you will be an effective witness about the kingdom of God and about Christ Jesus. Watch now. And seeing the man who had been healed, they saw the man that was raised up, delivered from paralysis. They said, well, there's evidence here. <laughs> and they let Peter and John go. I'm saying this, beloved, as I close. The world need to see the evidence again of the power of the Holy Spirit at work through sons and daughters of the living God. If there's ever a time we need more of the Holy Spirit power, it is now. It is now the Shekinah glory. The Shekinah glory. It's all to do with the presence of God Almighty. Hallelujah. My last verse. I, I mentioned to you, I take a little bit of time to close. After Peter and John were released, they went now to the other disciples. Acts 4, verse 30 and 31. Are you ready? They went to the other disciples. They raised their voices. I'm just reading. To God in prayer about being threatened. When you and I are being threatened, it's time to pray. When your circumstances threaten you, pray. Watch this. They raised their voices to God and they prayed for more boldness. I thought he was pretty bold to tell these people, you crucified Jesus, you killed him. <laughs> he just came out of jail. And he tells the very people who caused him to, to, to go to jail, he says, you, you, you are basically the troublemakers for the kingdom of God. You guys killed him. But he rose from the dead. And that's the message they start to proclaim. And then they got threatened. Now they go to some other disciples and they all pray together. Hallelujah. And I said to God, God, stretch out your hand to heal that signs, wonders may be done through the name of Jesus. After they prayed, verse 31, chapter 4, read it. After they prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. I thought they were already filled with the Holy Spirit. There's one baptism, but many infillings. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. 
This was a long broadcast, an hour and four minutes. I could not break it up. But listen to it and listen to it and you'll get more out and God will add to your life. Never be embarrassed to say that I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, ask the Father and he will give you the Spirit. Now is the time to ask God to give us, to let us have the Spirit without measure. No limitations. No measure. So we can be the sign and the wonder to the world. And like this man who was raised up from his paralysis and stood there and those critics and uh, uh, doubters and accusers, they had to zip their lip. They said, what can we do? There's the evidence standing right there. A miracle has taken place. Hallelujah. God bless you. May the Lord strengthen you. Until next time, remember, Jesus is Lord. And by the way, this little sign here, AIM Apostolic Insight Ministries, for many years, that's what I flow with. As a servant of the Lord, if you would like to sow a gift, make it out right there to AIM. And what you can do, as you make it out to AIM, mail it to P.O. Box 485 Mount Vernon. P.O. Box 485 Mount Vernon. Amen. May the Lord keep you and bless you. Until next time, remember, Jesus is still Lord. Bye now.